Hi everybody, I'm Casey Ferris. I make videos on DaVinci Resolve here on YouTube. Today we're talking about color grading and specifically about the node order in the color page. This is something that I feel like people get kind of intimidated by, especially if you're new with color grading, but we're gonna dive into my recommendations for kind of how to set up your nodes and it's really simple, I promise. Let's go. Here we are on the color page of DaVinci Resolve. I always feel like I need to tell you what's on screen even though you can see it. <laughs> it's a girl holding paint samples, okay? This is, I don't know why I need to, okay, whatever. And up here we have our nodes. If you're super new and you have no idea what nodes even are, basically each node is a group of corrections. Anything that you do down here lives inside of a node and you can put nodes together and kind of make different steps for your color grade. So for instance, if you wanna make your shot a lot darker, which we're just gonna ruin this for effect, that adjustment that I just made lives in this node. I can go up here and right click and select node label and rename that to dark. And I can also right click and go to add node, add serial and add another node. This again is the same thing. It's just a group of corrections. Anything that you do down here lives in this little group of things. So if I wanna make this really yellow, I can push it towards yellow here in the second node and that correction lives right there. So we'll call this yellow. You can turn a node on or off by clicking on its number right here. So if I click on two, that'll turn this correction on or off. And so we can preview this, what this looks like when I don't have the yellow correction or when I don't have the dark correction. See how that works? There are various kinds of nodes we might get into in a second, but that's pretty much how it works. You connect these up in a flowchart. This left little green dot here is the untouched image and we have it flow through this dark correction and then through our yellow correction and then all the way out to this right green dot, which is the image that actually gets rendered out to our screen. If we disconnect these, we don't have any correction going on. And same thing if I have a node here, but it's not connected to anything, we're only gonna see what's actually connected in this flow. So I'll right click here in this node graph and say reset all grades and nodes to bring it back to defaults. So this is one of those things where there's infinite possibilities. There are so many things that you can do. If you're watching something like this video, you might've seen things where there's all these crazy different node graphs that people have, and it can just be really intimidating. It's like, oh yeah, this is how I did my color grade. And some people work like this. There are a lot of super pro colorists that have this kind of huge node tree built so that they can work on any shot really quickly and it works for them. Here's the good news. You don't need to do all of this to do, well, to do any kind of color grade, really. This is just how some people like to work. So again, I'll right click and reset all grades and nodes. And if you're like me, you like to keep things as simple as possible. It might feel really important to have that great big node graph, but for 99% of the things that you're actually going to do, you don't practically need that kind of thing. In fact, you don't need to have any kind of template at all. You can kind of make this up as you go, and there's nothing wrong with that. If you wanna do something like add some contrast and play with some various settings here, you can totally do that all in one node and it's not going to look bad necessarily. The reason you use all of these nodes is mostly to keep yourself organized. And then there's also things like, I'll make a new node here and let's say we want to select something like just her face and do some kind of correction only to her face. You can only do that by making another node. So part of this is necessary and then part of it is just to stay organized. So with all of that said, when I'm working on a project, I do like to work with a fixed node tree. And when I say a fixed node tree, I mean sort of like a template where I do one correction in this node and I do another correction in the second node and I do another certain kind of correction in the third node and it's always kind of in that order. The big reason for that is just it helps me stay organized and if I'm doing similar things to each shot, I don't have to spend time creating the same node tree or a very similar one for each shot. It also kind of gives you sort of a to-do list, right? So if this is step one, this is step two, and this is step three, you can kind of work through those steps without getting lost. Huh, that's a lot of preamble, but those kind of concepts are pretty important even before you get into the actual template for the nodes. So with all of that out of the way, here's what I like to do. In this first node, what I like to do is do exposure. That's kind of anything that has to do with the brightness of the image as a whole. Next node, I like to do saturation and temperature. I like to put these in the same node because I feel like I'm generally adjusting them both sort of at the same time. If I wanna make this a little bit warmer, I might also want it to be a little more saturated. And I just generally kind of think of those together. So I put those in the same node. The next node will usually be contrast, oftentimes with a custom curve. And then after that, I'll get into kind of the secondaries. So hit Alt S to add a serial node, right click this one and call this window one. 
And what I like to do is add a circle window here and then just turn this off because I don't really know what I wanna use it for yet, but I do have this circle node ready. And then I'll select this and hit Alt P and that'll make a parallel node, right click and call this window two. And I'll do a similar thing, but this time I'll add a gradient window because I feel like sometimes I like to use a gradient window and have that handy. And it's usually on the bottom or a side. So I'll just have this start off on the bottom like that. And again, turn off the window. The reason these windows are parallel nodes is because sometimes the windows will overlap and kind of both do different things. And long story short, if you have them as parallel nodes, they blend together in a nicer way. They're also both taking the same input image, which if you're doing something like qualifiers or changing certain colors, that's good to have a consistent input for each node. Whereas if these overlapped at all, and I was adjusting the brightness of the blues, and then in this one, I was adjusting the brightness of the greens, they might crosstalk in a way that I don't want. So that's why we have our parallel nodes. And then after the parallel mixer, I'll hit Alt S, and this last one, I'll usually just have tweaks, just like that. Is this perfect for all situations? No. Sometimes I add other windows, sometimes there's a lot more nodes, but this is a really good starting point for especially kind of the primary corrections and really the basic color that I need for most projects. And so oftentimes what I'll do is I'll get this all set up and I'll make sure that all of our nodes don't have anything going on. So I'm not actually adjusting anything in any of these nodes. They're just empty and labeled and kind of laid out the way that I want. And then I'll shift select everything in our timeline and then middle button mouse click on the shot I was working on. And that will copy this node structure to all of the different shots in the timeline. And what I've been doing a lot of lately is just kind of working through this whole timeline, especially if it's a smaller timeline, it's just going through and doing a pass on this whole thing for each of these nodes. So exposure pass, I'm just hitting up and down on the keyboard, making sure that I have my exposure set right. I'm just going through my offset, pushing that up if I need to, pushing it down if I need to, and doing any kind of adjustments that I need. Of course, you're gonna to wanna to do this under some kind of color management, whether that's at the project level or if it's in your timeline nodes. I have a couple of videos on that. If you're not familiar with how color management works, check out this video right here that goes through a little bit of what we're talking about here, but all about color management. All of this would happen before some kind of color management. If you want to do something for the individual shot, I would have a node after the tweaks node with something like a color space transform. And I'd have some way to convert that to my output space before all of this. If your nodes ever get wonky, you can right click, clean up node graph, and then just move this around a little bit. And then I would go through and basically just look at all of my shots and and just kind of concentrate on what each of these nodes is doing. So do I like the saturation and temperature here? Do I wanna change that, make it cooler, warmer, make it stronger, change the saturation or the color boost, however I might wanna do that. Is my contrast right? Maybe I wanna add a little bit, little bit deeper contrast here. And then at that point, I would go through and do something like add a window, whatever we wanna do for the shot. But that's pretty much the idea. Pretty simple node graph. Doesn't have to be complicated, just has to be functional. This is the one that I like to use. If you wanna make it really easy, you can download this as a power grade, which you just import into your gallery here, and you can select whatever shots you wanna copy this to, middle button mouse click, and that will add our template here. And you can use it on your own projects. That's pretty neat. I'll put a link to that in the description. By the way, if you don't know, we just released a new color grading training. This goes through everything that you need to know about color grading images inside of DaVinci Resolve. Even if you're a super noob to color, we go through all of the basics and really build on that with some professional techniques for color grading projects from beginning to end. Make sure to check that out. I'll have a link in the description. So I hope that was helpful for any of you color noobs. Make sure to check out that color training right there. And uh, hey, I really think that you look nice today. You know, I assume that the bathrobe is a temporary thing, probably. I mean, you're not gonna probably sit in it all day. I mean, right?